Hallelujah. He sent forth his word. And his word healed them. And delivered them from all their afflictions. Father, we thank you this morning. Because you have sent forth your word. This river that is flowing in the midst of this house. There is a river whose streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. Lord, we embrace this river. We embrace your word that has come unto us. This word is activated. This word is quickening. This word comes alive in every man and in every woman. You said, woman, thou art loose. This word is activated. The power of creation is activated in this word. That in whatever state or circumstances, Lord, we embrace this river. We embrace this river. We embrace this river. And we receive the benefit of this river. Woman, thou art loose. We stand upright. Our heads are lifted up. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you worship. Blessed be your name, O God. Let there be bread unto the eater. Let there be seed unto the sower. Let your word profit us this morning. Let your word advance your interest in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to share on a burden that I've titled New Wine in a New Wine Skin. But I won't be able to take the entirety of the body in one go. So I'm going to split it into two parts. Part one and part two. So today we are going to attempt to look at part one. And God willing next week we will look at part two. But in part one, I'm going to split it into two parts. I'm going to look at some recent developments in Christendom some comments and some positions that have been taken by some men of God. I'm just going to drop some guiding principles for us to be able to interpret, for us to be able to interact with those comments that were made by certain men of God. And then the second part of today's ministration, we will look at the new wine in new wine skin. Amen. So before we go into the body today, let me just make some few comments. I don't know if you've been following your social media recently. There were some profound comments that were made by certain men of God. I just want to drop certain principles for us to be able to judge, for us to be able to evaluate some of these statements. I won't mention names, but I'll just say some of the things that they said. Number one. One said that God told him that he should focus on the words of Jesus rather than on the episodes. That what Jesus Christ said physically is more important than what Paul wrote in the episode. And that Paul's words, as it were, they are inferior to the words that Jesus Christ spoke physically. I don't know if you saw it in social media, but it's trending. That's number one. Number two, another one said that he has been seeing God's general appear to him severally. And that Paul made a lot of mistakes 
in the episode. And that he's been given the mandate to correct those mistakes that Paul made. These words are not coming from ordinary men of God. There are people that you have thousands of people following. Uh, emojis. And even if you go to their website, you will see, preach it, man of God, you are correct. This one says that he has been mandated to correct the mistakes that Paul made, that several generals have been appearing to him and they've been speaking to him. And in fact, he said that every word in the Bible is not the word of God. The way he puts it, that the word of God is different from the Bible. Okay? It might sound com confusing. But I'll just spend like 20 minutes just to give some guidelines for us to be able to interact, to, to interrogate these statements. If there's something we've been saying in this church, is that open your Bible and search the scripture, if it be so. It doesn't matter from whom it's coming. Even if it's Brian Moore that is saying it, it doesn't matter. You remember we said something in this church some time ago, the principles for interpreting the scripture. We said there are two weaknesses. Do you remember? The primary weakness and the secondary weakness. Do you still remember? The primary weakness is the word of God. It defines the boundary of whatever God wants to say. Yes, we have 66 books of the Bible. But it pleased the fathers when they assembled to say, look, yes, there were more than 66 books. But based on certain parameters, as the Holy Ghost led them to say, look, we say these 66 books are the word of God we want to govern our lives with. They are the canons of Christian principles. Those folks, they had the Holy Spirit. And the 66 books is more than enough for us to experience what Jesus has secured for us. And so we said the primary weakness is the word of God. Is the primary weakness. And then you have the secondary weakness. God spoke to me. I had a dream. I had a revelation. I was in a trance. I was taken to seventh heaven. All those are secondary weaknesses. They must align. They must align with the word of God. And so it doesn't matter for whom is coming. If it does not align with the word of God, there's a question mark. I give you an example. I was in a dream. And the angel of the Lord appeared to me. Sorry, it's not even the angel of the Lord. Jesus Christ appeared to me in his glory. And he said, Amos, Amos. That woman there is your wife. Amos is married. But the angel spoke to me, Amos, that woman there is your wife. Leave this your wife and go join yourself to that woman. For you made a mistake when you married this wife of 30 years. Go join yourself to that woman. It must sound very exciting. The angel of the Lord spoke to you. Consistency with the primary weakness. The Lord is divorce. Or even the woman is not born again. One fine lady in the TV, the Lord spoke to me and said, that is your wife. Leave your marriage, go join yourself to that woman. That woman is not born again. The primary weakness is very clear. Thou shall not be unequally yoked with unbeliever. So no matter how you paint the revelation, and that is coming from the bishop or from the pope, 
is inconsistent with the primary weakness. Are you following me? Some somebody, somebody will tell me, oh, but Uzziah married a prostitute. So you need to understand the primary weakness. Hebrews 1 says, in the olden days, in time past, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets in gradual revelations. But in this last day, he has spoken unto us through his son. And so if Hosea married a prostitute, it was a type, it was a message to show God's love for a backsliding nation that even in your backsliding state, I still love you, I still care for you, I'm still longing for you. Somebody will come and say, look, yes, Hosea, God told, it's God that told Hosea to marry the prostitute. So if I'm going to marry that unbeliever, it's consistent with the primary witness. Brethren, it's not. The primary weakness is very clear. Thou shalt not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I don't know if I'm setting the foundation. The primary weakness defines the boundary. Or whatever experience, let the man jump up, jump down. It must be consistent with the primary weakness. But if a people do not know the primary weakness, whatever the MOG says, that's what my pastor said. That's what the bishop said. Friends, it's not what the bishop said. What does the word say? It is written. It is written, God's word. And this man said, we should not focus on Paul's writing. We should focus on the words of Jesus. Praise God. This is a very senior man of God with thousands of people following him. But I'll just make some statements and allow you to go back and evaluate them. Number one. The statements of Jesus and Paul are from the same source. Are you listening to me? The Father. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. So one cannot be said to be superior to the other. Jesus Christ said, I do not speak anything except that which I hear from the Father. And Paul will say in Galatians 1, 11 to 12, that which I speak to you, I receive by revelation from the Father. So, both of them are speaking from the same source. So, you can't say one is superior to the other. In fact, the episodes are the amplification of the gospel. Like you're in primary school, you do one plus one, two, one plus two, four, whatever. Elementary. That same arithmetic, you take it to the secondary school, you'll be doing mathematics. You take it to the university, you'll be doing algebra. Applied mass, industrial mass. There is a principle which is the foundation. So the episodes are the amplification of the gospel. In fact, Jesus Christ said in John 16 that there are so many things I want to tell you, but you can't, you can't, you can't grab it. But when the Holy Spirit comes, it will lead you into all truths. And somebody was praying this morning, Father, unveil unto us your truth. And so the words that Jesus Christ spoke is what is being amplified in the episodes. They are from the same source. I would just like to read a passage in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. That these same words that Paul spoke... The people receive not as the words of Paul, but as the word of God. First Thessalonians 2 13. I will be slow just for those online. And because not just we here, I know some other people will watch it online. But I just want to be very slow so that people that will watch it online can also interrogate some of the things that we are saying. So first Thessalonians 2 13. Do you want to project it or I read? For this cause also thank we God with our season. Because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as in truth, the word? The word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 
So it was Paul that was ministering. But the church in Thessalonica, they knew that it wasn't just the words of man, but this was the word of God. Philip, Ephesians 2 verse 20 say we are built on the foundation of the apostles. So your growth and your advancement is based on what the apostles have amplified. So somebody cannot say, look, we ditch all the episodes and just focus on what Jesus Christ spoke. In fact, it's, that's too elementary. We know no man after the flesh. Jesus in his flesh, there are so many things he could not say because the people that didn't have the capacity to understand some of the things he was saying, it would take the Holy Spirit to amplify. Ah, this is what the master meant. The statement that God said focus on the words of the gospel only is not supported by the scripture. But some people say, oh, preach it on man of God. That is very correct. Even the disciples that Jesus Christ spoke with, they struggled with the revelations of Jesus. They could not understand. Jesus was with them for three and a half years. But what was their own understanding? That he was going to save them from the Romans. That was their own understanding. Our sister quoted Acts 1, 8, 6, 7, 8. When will you give the kingdom? That was their understanding. They didn't understand. Even Paul, even Peter and Co. To accept the Gentiles into the body, they struggled with it. But Jesus Christ in John 17 was praying. I have other sheep, apart from this one that I'm speaking to, that I will bring into the fold. But they struggled. But it would take the ministry of the Holy Spirit for them to come to that place that the Gentiles have a part in the kingdom of God. So my friends, the words that Jesus Christ spoke physically and the words that he's speaking and he spoke through Apostle Paul and all the, prophet, all the apostles, they're not different, they're from the same source. The words that I speak, they are life and they are spirit. So it's the spirit that gives life. And what Jesus Christ said, take Paul for example. It's we on this side of the divide that we can say yesterday, today, tomorrow. But with God, there's one eternity. There's no yesterday, today. It's one big expanse. Paul was not there during the supper. Was he there? But when you recount what happened that night, was there anything missing? That's the, that's the realm of the spirit. And you are saying, leave the apostles, leave the epistles. I just focus. You are limited. You'll be going to Judaism. Because in fact, a lot of the things that Jesus Christ spoke, there was no New Testament. It was still operating under the law. Because there can only be a New Testament on the death of the testator. How can you say focus on the gospel? The gospel leads you into the episodes. It's when Jesus Christ died and resurrected that the New Testament was bettered. And you say you focus. When we come to church, just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John will read. You will say a lot of the things that Jesus was ministering. Because the people have not come into the light. There was no New Testament. The New Testament was better after the death and the resurrection of the testator, Jesus Christ. Amen. So please, I just leave that one. If the source are the same, the father, then there's no difference. What Paul is saying and what Peter said. And in fact, the fellow reference uh, second. Peter 3.15. Let's open that passage. That Peter and Paul made mistakes. And he used that passage to justify it. Can you just project 2 Peter 
or 16? Okay. Second Peter 3, 16. Okay, let's just take it from verse 15. Let me read from the New King James Version. Because even Peter himself was with Jesus Christ physically. He struggled with some of the revelations that Paul had. And that was what he was referencing here. It wasn't a mistake. So, but let's take it from 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to those things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved, pro, our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his episodes, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scripture. I don't see the mistake that Paul, has, Paul made here. But this is the, the passage they quoted that Paul made a mistake. Friends, even Peter is saying that Paul taught some things that were difficult to understand. But with the Holy Spirit, it will unveil it unto you. Arise, kill, and eat. What was Peter's response? What was Peter's response? But Peter was with Jesus for three and a half years. This was even after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What was Peter's response? How can I eat something that is unclean? God was already opening the door to the Gentiles. Peter was still struggling. In fact, they even had to bring him to the council of the elders. Peter, come and tell us. Come and defend yourself. Why you will leave us to go and preach to the, to the Jews? Uh, to the Gentiles. And Peter will now be spending time to explain. I, I went to visit one man, Cornelius. I was just on my own on top of the, on top of the roof. And then the angel, he was very apologetic. But these people, they didn't have light. God's mind and God's purpose was not limited to the physical Israel. Jesus already told them, I have other sheep that is not of this folk. But if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel already talked about the, the, the two brooms that will be brought together. You know, and that there will be only one shepherd over there. There was already a prophecy, but they never understood it. Friends, this is one of the passages that they quoted that Paul made a mistake. But I'll drop it there. Let me go to this other one that said, several of God's generals have been appearing to him and told him that Paul made a lot of mistakes and that he's been mandated to correct them. Number one, the scripture does not support necromancy. Necromancy is speaking with the dead. It's not supported by the scripture. So if you say Paul, uh, Paul appeared to you, Elijah appeared to you, who else Moses appeared to you, it's necromancy. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12 is death. To the man that practiced necromancy. First Samuel 28, 8. When Saul in his distress needed a word from the Lord. And he needed to speak with the dead. He hid. He was hiding. To go and consult a medium. Why will he hide? Because he was already banished in the land. It was something that God did not sanction. So if a man of God said Moses appeared to me. Elijah appeared to me. My dead mother appeared to me. This one appeared. You're already practicing necromancy. No matter the man of God who you are, be an apostle or a bishop or a pope, what does the primary witness say? That God disapproves of necromancy. Number two, Acts 16, 16 tells us about a young girl. No, before I go to Acts, in that experience of 1 Samuel 28. He said, I brought a spirit. And that spirit looks like Samuel. And he told the things that will happen. Brethren, it wasn't Samuel. It 
was a demonic expression that could foretell the future. I stand to be corrected, but it wasn't Samuel. As I'll share some other passages later, it was demonic expression. It wasn't Samuel. At 16, 16, there was a young girl that had the spirit of divination that could foretell the future. The word translated divination is python, serpentine spirit, serpentine spirit, demonic. That girl could foretell the future. It could tell you exactly what will happen tomorrow. But what was the medium? The spirit of divination. And when Paul would say, this spirit of divination, come out. What happened? There was, the girl was delivered and there was confusion. Revolt. Because it was business for the owners. And so somebody cannot be practicing the spirit of divination under the python spirit and says several generals are appearing to him. It's not supported by the primary weakness. Number three. Second Corinthians 11, 12 to 14 says that Satan himself has transformed into an angel of light. Satan could manifest to you several. The fact that he gives a correct word does not validate it. Art 16, 16 makes us to understand that girl was operating under the spirit of divination and was giving correct words. But when he met the correct one and Paul took authority over that spirit, that power was cut off. Friends, Satan himself can transform into an angel of light. So we need to be careful. This is what I believe. This is what the primary witness says. That these generals are dead and asleep and awaiting the resurrection. That's what the scripture says. The believers are asleep and are waiting the resurrection. You might tell me that they are in heaven. We can have that conversation. I think we've already dis discussed in this house about resurrection. Because if they're already in heaven, then you don't need resurrection. Because they're they already in heaven. Why do you need to resurrect them? If you're already in heaven and join with God and flying and singing, and then you now wake up and then come back to the earth, come and look for your body, wear your body, and then come and stand before God in judgment again, and then God will now say, you are all good and worthy servant, come back into that estate. It does not make sense. The Bible says, Acts 7, 60, 1 Corinthians, let's take one of the parts. It says that they are asleep. Because we will still revisit it because there are so many things we, we talk, but in our own reality, we don't really believe it. The hope of the believer is resurrection. If you go to First Corinthians, it says, if only in this earth we have hope, we have all men most miserable. Those that have died, he said they die in mystery, they are wasted. But because there is a resurrection, they if there is a resurrection, we suffer and endure all the pains and all the inconveniences now because we know there is a resurrection. But if I'm already in heaven, I'm already wherever I am, then Paul will not spend all those time in 1 Corinthians 15 talking about people that are asleep being resurrected. People that are asleep taking on a new nature and a new character. So these generals are dead are asleep. You can go and check it. First Corinthians 15. Can you project First Corinthians 15, 6, 18? That talks about they are asleep. Quickly. After that, it was seen by over 500. You've gone off. 1 Corinthians 15, 
15. Ready? And 1 Corinthians 15, 6. After that, it was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some are falling asleep. Verse 18. Then those who are falling asleep, falling asleep, have perished. First Thessalonians 4.13. First Thessalonians 4.13. Quickly. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are falling asleep. So you can Google it or check it from your concordant asleep. Consistently asleep. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the Bible says, those saints that were asleep rose up. Is that in your Bible? Asleep. Acts 2.24, 2 Peter 3, 4, they all talk about saints being asleep. So for me, the primary witness says that these generals are asleep, awaiting the resurrection, the trumpet call, where the dead will rise up. So that invalidates that the generals are speaking to me. I don't know if you hear where I'm coming from. The primary weakness must support the revelation. Also, nobody has the mandate to correct the scripture. Nobody. Second Timothy 3, 16 says, all scripture are inspired. All, not some. All scripture are inspired by the breath of the Lord. The bad, the ugly, the good, everything in the scripture were prompted. The Bible says only men spoke as they were moved of God. So when they put some stories that seem not to make sense, it's not at your own discretion to say, why did God put it there? God put it there because there's a lesson to be learned from it. Lord slept with the daughters, for example. It wasn't by accident the Holy Spirit put it there. There will be some stories that seem not to make sense. The Holy Spirit put it there. All scripture, thank you. All scripture, not some, is given by the breath of God and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Not some. So when the man was saying, the Bible is not the word of God, Yes, you have all sorts in the Bible, but it was better by the breath of the Lord. God put it there. That when you read it, you might think it does not make sense. But God has a purpose why he put it there. All scripture are inspired of God. And so as you begin to read it, that is the logos that one that you say does not make sense, the Holy Spirit quickens it and gives you a rema. I don't know if I'm communicating. So when you are telling the brethren, brethren, the Bible is not the word of God. You're already deceiving the brethren. You're already confusing them. So I'm going to the Bible. I'm looking for the one that is the word. The one that is not the word. Uh, Lot slept with the daughters. Okay, this one is not God's word, but though it's in the Bible. Friends, Lord does not sleep with the daughter by accident. God gave, there's a lesson in there. Genesis 19 says, flee to the mountain. Flee to the mountain. Say, no, Lord, I don't want to flee to the mountain. Let me go to the valley. Let me go to Sodom. That one is closer. Conditional obedience when it suits me. Okay, God said, okay, go now. Go to Sodom. And he went to Sodom. When there was confusion in Sodom, oh, God, I don't want to stay in Sodom again. I want to go to the mountain. By the time he went to the mountain, God that is telling you to flee to the mountain had a provision for you on the mountain. God is not man 
When he was saying flee to the mountain, he knows that his Lord and the two daughters, and he had made provision for the daughters. But now that you are ready to obey God in your, on your own terms and condition, that provision was no longer there. And Lord fell into the sin that he fell into. So when you just say, oh, Lord slept with the daughters, it's not God's word. You are deceiving the brethren. So my friends, nobody has the mandate to correct the scripture. I will ask the man of God, show me in the scripture. When God says he has given you the mandate. Of course, he will not say he had the revelation. But the revelation will be subject to the word of God, the primary weakness. In fact, Revelation 22, 18 to 19 says, No man should take away, and no man should hide. Friends, nobody has the mandate to correct Paul. In fact, there are certain experiences. Not all the apostles and all the prophets and all the bishops that we find so many in Nigeria. People that you don't know their origin. People you don't know their antecedents. They just come an apostle. Is it in this way? Eh? We've been in this journey for many years. We should be calling brother Fred, Pope. Or calling brother Hope, apostle. Those guys have been around for 40 years, some are 50 years. And they're answering very simple, brother Sam, brother Hope. And some people from nowhere just appear and say it's carry color on his neck. And say it's a Pope, he's a bishop, he's an apostle. People that we don't know their antecedent. And friends, don't be deceived. It's not the signs and the wonders that validates the ministry. Matthew 7 says, in that day. Can you go to that match? In that day, they will say, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We heal the sick in your name. We did this in your name. We prophesy. But what did he say we'll do to them? What did he say we'll do to them? He will say, I do not know you. I do not know you. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demon in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. But today in Nigeria, we are running after the prophecy. We are running after the, the, the deliverance. We are running after the, the healing, after the bread. That is what we use to validate the ministry. But God, Jesus Christ is saying here, is those that, do, those that do the will of my Father. And what is the will of my Father? That which has been written in the scripture. I do not do anything except that which I see my Father do it. Friends, nobody, nobody has a mandate to correct the scripture. And nobody has a mandate to correct Paul. In fact, there are experiences that Paul had that many of these folks, <laughs> let's leave that one. Conclusion. I will do my message in another 10 minutes and we'll run the conclusion. 2 Timothy 2.5. It's the same thing we've been saying in this house. Study. Study. Be diligent to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the study. Not come to church. On Sunday, you just come to church. Who preached that? Oh, it was Brochuka. Okay. Study. Brochuka said this. You go back and, oh, Brochuka, this thing you said, you sent me a personal note. I don't seem to see it. Can you compare this scripture with this scripture? And you begin to have that conversation. Study to show yourself. People have posted things even on the national platform. And I, on my own, take, I'll send the person a personal note. I say, look, this thing that you said, compare it with this, compare with that, compare with this. How, what does, what, how do we balance it? Study. It's not the man of God that said it. My bishop said it. Friends, study. 
in South Africa, a man of God told the people to go and eat grass. Eh? Brethren, tongue speaking, all of them went outside like goats, were eating grass. I'm not telling you, go and Google it. With eating grass, people that won't study. Oh, man of God, praise God, we should go and eat grass. Where is it in the primary weakness? Green pastures. <laughs> My brother said green pastures. Did he say you should go and eat the green pastures? <laughs> it will lead you beside the green pastures. Eh? Another one said, ladies should bring their own this to church. That they will pray for you. They will get us bad. Friends and ladies brought their own this to church. This is not yes say. This is real. Because people won't study the scripture. You reverence the man of God. The man of God has become God. Another one says, so my leg does not touch the ground. Eh? And they were carrying him. Pentecostal, they were carrying him. His leg doesn't touch ground. When you want to minister, they carry him up and he'll be ministering. Oh God, deliver us. Because the people refuse to believe the truth. They've been given to believe a lie. Study. And that's what we continue to encourage us in this church. Study. Ask questions. First John 4, 1 John 4.1, test all spirits. Test all spirits. It's not, oh, the man said it, it happened. He said, I'll have a baby next year. Yeah, the baby came. I even have triplets, praise God. I go sell my house and bring to the man of God. At 1616, the spirit of the python can, can make things happen. Have you not seen babies that are dedicated to water spirits? They go to the river. I was telling, it was Shalom, we were, were traveling together. I, was, I gave her a lift. And I was telling her, look, in my former place of work in Landmark, Water Corporation, just overseeing the beach. Early mornings, I got to the office 637. You will see women being baited by the ocean there. I'm not telling you this. In Lagos here, I'll be in my office around fourth, fifth floor. I will video it. Women being baited by the riverside. After they've baited them, the pot, do not bury the pot. Oh, my friends. If you don't believe the scripture, you will believe a lie. And that woman gets a baby. The demon that gives that woman a baby. And that baby's life is, 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 is bent forever until God's mercies will visit that child. The fact that the man prophesied and things happen does not validate that he's a man of God. Satan himself can transform. Test all spirits. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. How do you try it? Through the word. Judge it. What does the word say? The fact that he said it and it came to pass. It's not a thing. The devil can do the same. The Bible says even the elect, even the elect can be deceived. The elect can be deceived. Even those of us here can be deceived. I can just put a little leaven in the food. If you are not sensitive, you are not discerning, you will eat it. It's gradual. Check out the men that have missed it. They didn't start one day. Have you heard about Jim Jones? An American preacher that took almost like 5,000 brethren to South America. Have you heard about him? It didn't start one day. In the church, there were signs and miracles happening. And then came one day, the Lord said to us that we should go to a virgin land and create our own kingdom, the new earth and the new heaven. Carried brethren from the U.S., almost like 5,000, carried them to South America to a country called Guyana. If you know your scripture, when it says, I create a new heaven and I create a new earth, it's not you that you are. That earth in Guyana is cursed. If you don't know the scripture, they followed him. And now they were in Guyana, they had their own farm, their own business, and suddenly the man said, all marriages in this church is dissolved. I'm daddy. I'm the, all the children in this church, they belong to me. It didn't happen one day. Just keep sowing the living. And then, when people wanted to leave, they said, no, you can't leave again. And then when the American government said, oh, anyone that wants to come back to America will come and evacuate. 
The man said, brethren, let's take poison and die and go to heaven. You are, you are look, brethren, brethren drank poison and died. Go and cook it. It didn't start one day. It's the way all these men of God have started now. They are sowing it. They are sowing it. People that are not designing it. In Revelation, it talks about the flood. And the earth opened up and swallowed the water. There's a flood that is being released. Men and women that are earthbound, that can't discern their right from the left, they are swallowing the waters. But brethren, let's test all spirits. Let's study. Let's judge all spirits. The Bible says, let him that thinketh his stand, take heed, lest he falls. I don't know how this one comes across to you, but during the week, there was something that just dropped in my spirit, that I just dropped it in this assembly. Even amongst ourselves, I say something, or you say something, let's go to the scripture. The Berean brethren were searching, were searching, Seven, Acts 17, 11, if these things that Paul was saying, if it be so. Comparing scripture with scripture. O'Brien must have said, oh, the saints are asleep. Okay, how about this scripture that said Elijah was taking a, in a shower to heaven? Oh, O'Brien must, how about this one, this scripture that says this? You are, you are now interrogating what I have said. And then we can have a conversation. He said, oh, today you'll be with me in paradise. What does it mean? You interrogate the scripture, you interrogate the scripture, you interrogate the scripture. And then when you have a rema, the truth that sets you free. Amen. Friends, let's watch that space. We've not seen the end. We've not seen the end. Moses, in all his revelation, was a humble man. He was able to know his limitation. This one that have not, it's only in Nigeria. Count the number of apostles that you have in Nigeria. Count the number of apostles. Do you know what it takes to be an apostle? An apostle of just uh, my local church. It's part of the five-fold ministry that God has put in his body that cuts across national and international. You are a gift to the body. I have, I have a church. <laughs> Let me not say, I have, I have somebody close to me. His church is like 20, he's a bishop. Carry a big chain and carry a big cross on his neck. And his church will have 30 people in his church. He's a big shop. And we have hundreds of apostles all over the place. Friends, let's search the scripture. Let's search the scripture. The Lord will help us and continue to shine his light on our paths in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know why I'm saying this. But even amongst us, anybody says anything. Oh, uncle, oh, this thing you said, what does it mean? That scripture, that scripture, what? Have a conversation. And if you cannot portray it from the scripture, you pack it. A brother ministered something 20, 20, more like 30 years ago. And that ministration scattered the brethren. Huh? There was a ministration about resurrection. It scattered. The brother said, bro, thank you for the ministration. Oh, great insight. But we are not seeing it. The brother packed it. He packed it. In God's own time, if it's the truth, the light will shine upon it. I was talking about Moses. You know Moses, the kind of revelation he had. You know he wrote Genesis and all those stuff. Where was he? Was he born when God was creating the earth? Even in all the midst of the revelation, he still had limitations. When the daughters of Zelophah in Numbers 27 say, Moses, the scripture says that when a man dies without a son, the inheritance should pass. The inheritance cannot pass to the daughters but you pass to the brother that has a son or whatever. And then these guests came and said, ah, man of God, this is what the scripture says, but give us our father's inheritance. 
Moses, the man of God that saw God face to face, said, really? I should give you your father's inheritance. Where is it in the Bible? These people had revelation. They had insight into God's mind. When, they, when God is saying this inheritance will pass on to sons, it wasn't physical sons. God had a purpose. Creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Moses now went to God and said, God, this is what these ladies are saying. God said what they are saying is correct. Moses humbled himself. But if I'm the man of God, the apostle and the bishop, to the man, who are you? You come and ask me. Go and take pin. But can you, they, those people don't even provide any platform to respond. They, they just give decrees. But Moses went to God. God, this is what these ladies are saying. What does it mean? Black and white, inheritance does not pass to ladies. It passes only to sons. But that son is not the physical son. The guests could see beyond that God was raising up sons. That creation, and from that day became a law that inheritance can pass to women. And that's what creation is waiting for. Creation is waiting for the manifestations of sons of God. That when the sons of God have come into their own liberty, creation can partake of that liberty. When sons of God are not matured, we all suffer. We pray and pray and pray and pray. Creation is waiting and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. That when the sons of God have entered into their own liberty, creation will enter. From that day, other women in Israel could partake of their father's inheritance because of what those girls stood for. They were sons. They entered into their Lord. And other people in accordance with the primary weakness, Romans 8, cannot benefit of that liberty. The Lord bless you. Amen. When the sons of God entered into that liberty, we're talking about healing. When you are healed and you are operating in the fullness of the divine heart, it becomes easier to dish it. People are bound. When the sons of God, you just walk through a place and the devils are giving way. Creation will partake of your liberty in the name of the Lord Jesus. We've not been able to go into the week, uh, new wine and new wine skin today. But friends, you are a son. And God wants you to operate as a son. God wants you to come into that place where you are a representative of your father. But today, creation is groaning, including the sons. But God's word cannot be broken. That the sons will come into their own liberty. And when they come into their own liberty, they will be able to dispense that liberty to creation that is groaning. You are a son. You are a son. And the spirit of sonship is at work in you. You are a son. And the provisions of the covenant belongs to you. We that were no people have been brought near. We that were without hope have been brought near to have hope in God. Have been brought near by the blood of the Lamb to partake of the covenant. That creation is groaning. That cause in, in Genesis, in Christ Jesus, that cause has been lifted. But men and women need to come into the experience of that which has happened to them. Oh, praise the Lord. It's not going to happen. It has already happened. Oh, our sister began to say unto us, let's pray for truth. Not that you are going to get it. It's already happened. The other day I was reading Matthew 20 when it says, I am with you always. I'm with you always. Amplified says, irrespective of the situation, circumstances, I'm with you perpetually. But when I'm praying, Father, come and be with me. Father, as I go on this journey, keep me on this journey. Oh, Father, be with my family. He says, I am with you. Hebrews 13, 4, 5 says, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The day that revelation dawns on me, the day I catch that truth, the way I pray will be different. 
There's a consciousness, there's an awareness. There's a realization that I am a carrier of the presence of God. That wherever I go is an holy ground. Oh, praise the Lord. It says, where two or three are gathered in my name. I'm in the me It's not saying I'm going to be. Father, come and be with us. Father, come and be. It says, where two or three are gathered in his name. It says, I am in their midst. When I catch that revelation, I say, Father, thank you. For you are in the midst of this assembly. Father, thank you. For where your spirit is, there is liberty. Father, thank you. For the wicked shall not abide in the congregation of the righteous. Father, thank you. There's an awareness, there's a revelation that changes the way you pray. We will talk about this, the Lord granting us help. It's not going to be, but it has. He has secured it. He's not going to secure it. It has. When he says you are seated with him in heavenly places, it's not that you are going to. You are. But the day I catch that revelation, my life will change. But today I can be fighting around and just moving around with the demons and be struggling. I was telling Sharon, Sharon we're traveling. Some coppers, you know coppers, those, I don't know what they are now. They were going to a village to minister. And that village was known for witchcraft and terrible atrocities. They had gone to spy the village. And they told them, say, look, the head of all principalities and witches is coming to this village. On the 17th of this month. Oh, Masu Karababa Shantia. They said the head of all principalities and witches is coming. So the villagers were, ah, we say we they practice witchcraft. And then the people say the head of the witches are coming. Okay, now we'll be waiting to see the head. Friends, on the 17th, when they came, we declare unto you, according to Colossians 2 14, 15, 16. That Jesus, the Son of God, is the head of all principalities and power. Him we declare unto you. Today, he has arrested all these small, small demons and all this. Today, you come and submit to this head. Friends, that village knew light. That village knew the power of God. You saw a people with a different mindset. It wasn't the mindset that, ah, brethren, if you go to that village, you will die. Let's split the blood from today to tomorrow. But they already knew. They had a revelation that the head of all principalities and power, Jesus, is going to that village. Father, thank you. Thank you for that awareness, for that revelation. When they went, it was as per their revelation. That village was subdued. Was brought under the power of the head of all principalities and powers. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You are a son. You are a son. And the sons are exempt from all tributes and tribulations. From all customs. You are a son. Lord, we have prayed and continue to pray concerning certain matters in this house. But your word makes us to understand that whosoever the Son of God has set free is free indeed. And the Son of God has set us free. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness. Lord, we don't seem to understand it. I will continue to cry unto you, Lord, come and deliver me. When you say you have delivered me, you have translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Oh God, let this light break forth upon us as a people. Let this veil be lifted that we might know who we are in Christ. As he is, so are we in this world. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he appears and he keeps appearing, we shall be like him. Oh God, cause this revelation to break forth up. We, Lord, we keep praying for healing. 
we see all sorts harassing us in this local assembly. But your word says, by his Christ we were healed. He said, don't deal. Oh God, let this veil be lifted. Let this covering be lifted. Let there be a breaking forth of light. Let light dismantle all strong ghosts. All refuge of lies. Let your light break forth upon us as a people. That Lord, we don't only say with our mouth, but our heart is in it. That we believe this thing that you have said concerning us. Oh city, glorious things are spoken concerning thee. Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Let this river indeed flow amongst us this day. Let this river flow. Let it flow. It says the river flow through the streets of that city. Yes, Lord, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, let the river flow. Let nothing be hidden, be isolated from the power and the influence of this river. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, let this river flow. Let it touch every fiber of our being. That on account of the impact of this river, we might bring forth trees. And the leaves of these trees might be for the healing of the nations. Let my life be for the healing of the nations. Let my life be for the comfort of the nations. Let my life be for the recovery of the nations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. That which was impossible, let it be possible on account of this river that has flowed in the midst of this house today. Lord, help us, strengthen us to be diligent students, men and women interrogating the scriptures and asking questions. And let your breath continue to come upon us, men rightly dividing the word of truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.